This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at orders of reaction. The order of reaction with respect to a particular reactant is the power to which the concentration of a reactant is raised in the rate expression. In a previous video, we looked at this reaction together with its rate expression. From the rate expression, we can see that the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to hydrogen. It's important to note that orders of reaction can only be determined experimentally. They cannot be determined from the balanced equation for the reaction. So next we look at some examples. So now we look at how orders of reaction can be determined from experimental data. To do this, we use the initial rates method. We have data from four different experiments. We have the initial concentration of nitrogen monoxide, the initial concentration of hydrogen and the initial rate of reaction. The initial concentration of one reactant is changed to determine the effect on the rate of reaction. So we'll start by looking at the nitrogen monoxide. If we compare experiments 1 and 3, we can see that the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide has been doubled. For the same experiments, we can see that the concentration of the hydrogen remains constant. Next, we look at the effect on the rate of reaction. If we compare the rates of reaction for experiments 1 and 3, we can see that the rate has increased by a factor of 4. So when the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is doubled, the rate increases by a factor of 4. Therefore, the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide. Next, we look at the hydrogen. If we compare experiments 1 and 2, we can see that the concentration of the hydrogen has been doubled. If we compare the same experiments for nitrogen monoxide, we can see that the concentration remains constant. And if we compare the rate of reaction for experiments 1 and 2, we can see that the rate has doubled. So when the concentration of the hydrogen is doubled, the rate of reaction also doubles. Therefore, the reaction is first order with respect to the hydrogen. So at the bottom, we can see our experimentally determined rate expression. From this data, we have determined that the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to hydrogen. In our next example, we'll determine the orders of reaction with respect to the oxygen and nitrogen monoxide in this reaction. Starting with the oxygen, if we look at experiments 1 and 2, we can see that the concentration of the oxygen has doubled, whereas the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide remains constant. If we look at the initial rate of reaction, we can see it has doubled. So when the concentration of the oxygen is doubled, the rate also doubles. Therefore, the reaction is first order with respect to oxygen. So next, we look at the nitrogen monoxide. If we compare experiments 1 and 3, we can see that the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide has doubled, whereas the concentration of the oxygen remains constant. And once again, if we compare the initial rate, we can see that it's increased by a factor of 4. So when the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is doubled, the rate increases by a factor of 4. Therefore, the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide. And here we can see our experimentally determined rate expression. From this data, we have determined that the reaction is first order with respect to oxygen and second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide. In our final example, we'll determine the orders of reaction with respect to the nitrogen dioxide and the carbon monoxide in this reaction. So starting with the nitrogen dioxide, if we compare experiments 1 and 2, we can see that the concentration has been increased by a factor of 4. For the same two experiments, the concentration of the carbon monoxide has remained constant. If we compare the initial rate of reaction, we can see that it's increased by a factor of 16. So when the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide increases by a factor of 4, the rate increases by a factor of 16. Therefore, the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen dioxide. Next, we look at the carbon monoxide. If we compare experiments 1 and 3, we can see that the concentration of the carbon monoxide has doubled and the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide has remained constant. 
If we compare the initial rate of reaction for experiments 1 and 3, we can see that it has not changed. So changing the concentration of the carbon monoxide has no effect on the rate of reaction. Therefore, the reaction is zero order with respect to carbon monoxide. And here we have our experimentally determined rate expression. From this data, we have determined that the reaction is second order with respect to the nitrogen dioxide and zero order with respect to the carbon monoxide. Note that the carbon monoxide does not appear in the rate expression. So let's end with a summary. If changing the concentration of a reactant has no effect on the rate of reaction, the reaction is zero order with respect to that reactant. If changing the concentration of a reactant produces directly proportional changes in the rate of reaction, the reaction is first order with respect to that reactant. And if changing the concentration of a reactant leads to an increase in the rate of reaction equal to the square of the change, the reaction is second order with respect to that reactant. So that's all from this video. In the next video, I'll be looking at reaction mechanisms.